Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. It's time to start Act 5, the final one. A town doesn't even have a name. Is that the flooded barn that Ron went to help with in in uh, un un Pueblo de Nada? Yeah, I think that's Ron down there. Oh, it's a dead horse. Give me just a minute. I'm speaking as Clara, I'm trying to remember who Clara is. So this is Shannon over here. They're the one we, they're related to Weaver Marquez. We met them at first in the Elkhorn mine. Um, this is the kid that I think like gave us the hawk that we used to fly around and get to the doctor. This is Johnny and June book over here. That's Ron back there. I guess this is Clara. I don't remember who they are, though, to be honest. How did this all fit in that truck? It's bigger on the inside. <laughs> As Shannon, I think it rained. Rained a lot, I mean. Ah, uh, Ezra, that's the kid's name. The worms are going to be out for sure. Planning a fishing trip? Nah, that's a waste of good worms. I don't want to haul this stuff any further until we know exactly where we're going. I think I see some houses over there. It's a nice morning for a walk, but a bit muddy. So who are we playing as? What is this? Oh my god, we're playing as the cat? Okay, well, this is amazing. Oh, look at it go! Oh, the animations on that cat are really good. We can meow into the hole. <laughs> oh, this has such a strange atmosphere. Sad and whimsical at the same time. Junebug and Johnny strained to hear the noises coming from the well. It's like two people talking, but not to each other. Talking to themselves, maybe? They're each alone. Johnny shades his eyes with his hand. Ugh, my eyes aren't adjusting to this light. And then there's Johnny. Want to borrow mine? Kind of flickery, but okay. Want to see? Should we head back underground? Nah. 
Let's see this through. Could be fun. <laughs> oh, I just love running around as this cat. This is so fun. This game is so beautiful. I love the art style. This shouldn't have happened. I should have prepared better. Oh, there's there's the old dog without Conway. I forgot what we named the dog. You get to name it in the first episode, and I don't remember what we named it. I'm so sorry. I'm sure we'll say its name at some point. Look at those three up there. That's Bob, Ben, and... I forgot their name. Is it Emily? Who have we played with in Unpablo Donata? What is this creature? It's a shadow creature. That's eerie. Will it still fly? It doesn't look too bad. It kinda just seems like the wing's broken off. Everything else looks okay. But what would I know? I'm just a cat. Oh, there's more shadow people there. At first, they only observed the truck from a distance. It was an alien carcass, something that made more sense in death than in life. The company had dropped it off in the middle of the day, when everyone was at the plant. They let us sit overnight, alone and strange. Truck. Nikki thought it was ridiculous, but Ron approved. To Elmo, the truck was simply beautiful. Nikki. The town didn't produce much garbage anyway, she said. Who would drive it? And where? Garbage. The locals had turned to gardening when the company store stopped stocking canned vegetables, so there was very little garbage to be hauled off anymore. Locals. Everyone had to agree this was money and attention that would have been better spent addressing the town's drainage problems. Maybe finally get started on that damned messianic ditch. Better spent. Still, they had a few things to dispose of. Broken flower pots, empty glass bottles, clothes that didn't fit anymore. They gradually fell into the habit of collecting waste and carrying it to the truck. Once a month, some shadows would come in from the night woods and haul the garbage away on a cart. The shadows take the garbage? Oh, they just dematerialized. Wanda snores softly. Yeah, so this is the day after the big storm in Unpueblo de Nada. Think it'll rain anymore? Oh, I can click that to make it advance? Well, I have some places to revisit then. Nah. Ah, their name is Emily. I don't see any clouds. Hell, it'll probably rain anyhow. Just our luck. Assertive meow. <laughs> Oh, really? Mm. Confident meow. He thinks it's going to rain again tomorrow. <laughs> nah. I don't know, man. Animals have a sense for the weather. Can 
It runs so fast. Oh, I guess I can advance the Wanda snoring softly. Where's that going to go? Oh, I can wake him up. Cheerful meow. Wanda sleeps peacefully. Oh, leave them to their sleep. Will it still fly? Clyde. Oh, yes. She just got banged up a little in the storm. I'll have her up and running again by this afternoon, I'm sure. Can I fly it? Well, how's your upper body strength? Uh, it's good. Really good. This old girl's operated by pulleys. I mean, 100% mechanical. Well, except for the throttle. I could do that. I admire your confidence, young man. Yep, just a little bent metal. I'll have her skyworthy again in a matter of hours. Wow. I've been doing this a long time, kiddo. Oh no, this is the studio where we were broadcasting from. That's Mo, and that's their little station. Oh, the place got completely destroyed. All of the data archive is gone. Unless someone got it out of there before this turned totally bad. Elmo gave Rita a tour of the camera and wiring. She'd just been through a certificate program on public broadcasting at the community college, so no surprises there. Nikki showed her the video data bank. James demonstrated the Sandin image processor. And then Ron came barreling in with an urgent expression. Mm, video data bank. The station had a great collection of videotapes made by local artists along with a huge library of what looked like home movies. There were tapes about local politics, the weather, video dream diaries. Rita was eager to start contributing her own work. Home movies. It wasn't quite the radical guerrilla television crew she dreamed of joining. This group seemed more interested in sharing the town's home movies than culture jamming and interfering with corporate stations. But she liked that focus on local concerns concerns. Ron's news was clearly bad news. Rita's heart sank a little as they listened. She knew things were unraveling, knew from experience what that looked like. Unraveling. Wouldn't it be nice to arrive at the beginning of something for once? Beginning. But as she listened to Ron detail the power company's sudden withdrawal from town affairs, she heard other possibilities. She studied their faces and found concern, for sure, but also something like relief, hope, an awakening of play. Nikki looked like she might have been daydreaming. Power company's sudden withdrawal from town affairs? What caused that to happen? Awakening. These were people, Rita decided ready to step out of the company's shadow and build something of their own. Ron said the TV station would still be funded by court order. Could that be their anchor? No, oh, we're taking a little cat nap, a little cat stretch. So cool. Can I say hi to Mo? Slow Mo Crow. Warm coo. Hey, buddy. Can I meow? <laughs> Greeting meow. Oh, do you see the cat's... What is it doing? It's like shaking its paws off? Is it because it's like getting kind of wet? Trying to shake the water off, I think. Wow. 
negative meow, whoa. That was a great conversation. Whoa, you're willing to go all the way out there, cat? What was this building? Six or seven men stood in the sun about a dozen yards from the ditch, and he could hear them laughing. He tried not to hear them. Instead, he listened to the shovel punching through the dirt as he shaped the trench. It was wet dirt. Mud, really. It made a hungry sound as he shaped the trench walls. Trench. Glare from the noon sun made his sinuses tingle. The trench was a foot wide now. By the time he was done, he expected it to be about twice that, and run most of the way from the middle of town over to where it could drain off into the creek. Town. The laughter quieted into greedy chuckles, and he could feel the men approaching. What was that? I saw a button appear. Was it when I got close to the shadow? Something definitely appeared. Oh, there's another cat right there. Right there. Oh, I want to say hi to it, but I can't. Oh, there's Ezra, I think. Waffles for any weather. <laughs> what a name. Wow, she's a deep sleeper. Yeah, listen to that. Oh, it's making me a bit sleepy. Oh yeah, the rhythm of her breathing. It's nice. Hypnotic. Shannon breathes in slowly. Breathes out slowly. <laughs> blue farts. Is that the dog's name? Was it blue? Oh well. Ezra. What kind of fish are those? They're goldfish. They eat algae and mosquito eggs. Very helpful. Uh, 
I'm surprised they survived the storm, actually. Some weren't so lucky. And now I'm writing this poem. I'd like it to be hopeful somehow. But it just keeps coming out sad. George scanned the shelf. He quickly found the book he was looking for. There were only a few dozen left. More shelves than books now. A result of an experiment called the New Selection. Privately, he called it the Purge. Purge. But only privately. In small groups of reliable complainers. The unspoken rule was to hold back criticism as long as possible. Experiments needed time to unfold naturally without the interference of doubt. George would have preferred to complain more freely. Interference. Frazier proposed and executed experiments just like any other community member, but his experiments had a scorched earth quality. They were all destructive. He moved from one area of community life to the next in search of excess to cut back. Destructive. Lately, he turned his scythe to the library. The new selection meant decimating their store of books, according to Fraser's own inscrutable criteria. Now we are guaranteed something vital every time we take a book from the shelves. No more time lost to printed chaff. Vital. Fraser's colorless voice echoed in George's mind. You felt like spitting. Instead, he tucked the book under his arm and set off for the woods. Oh, hi, kitty. Where did you come from, huh? Follow a bird up here? These folks, the one who built this thing, they chased birds too. Really? That's what they wrote. They followed some migrating birds up here from Central America. Somewhere up to Florida. And then here. Well, that's what they wrote, anyway. I guess it might have been a metaphor. They must have been pretty nice pigs if they let you ride them like that. I made myself as light as a feather and they didn't even know I was there. Then what happened? Later, I had to cross the desert of broken glass. My shoes were ruined almost immediately. Wow. Did you cut your feet at all? I stepped very carefully around the sharp bits, but the sharp bits were everywhere. At first, I could barely see anything, but then a bit of moonlight broke through the clouds. It was intoxicating. I was swept away by its beauty. Just remembering it now, I might start crying. No, I'm okay. Did I tell you I discovered the place where all the garbage goes? I've always wondered. 
Do they just let it pile up somewhere forever? Oh no, it's much more exciting than that. There's a big fire at the center of the earth. It's been burning basically forever. The fire grows bigger and bigger as we pile on more garbage. Someday it'll burn out of control and all will be lost. I hung out with an old dog and some musicians. And then we both had quite an adventure. We should stick together. I agree completely. Whoa, did we just go upstairs? Damn, cat. You all right? So not too sad. No, no, I think it should be happy. Right. It's a remembrance. Right. Like a monument. Totally. So they should be represented with dignity and respect, of course. Of course. But not to the point where it makes everyone feel they have to be serious when they're standing under it. Does that make sense? No, yeah, it definitely does. I think I have an idea. Great. I'll just dig in. Thanks, Marianne. Happy to help? Look at our little cat prance. This is one confident cat. Croak reverberates inside the smoker. A frog slips out into the grass, too quick to see. Paints and chalk in the small bag, diary in the large bag, stuffed dog in the small bag, photograph of Chris in the large bag. Mm, no. In the small bag? Sandra couldn't decide. Should she keep the photo of her husband, or should Alex keep the photo of his father? Diary. She wrapped the diary in a towel before stuffing it into her bag, feeling slightly silly doing it. Silly. Fraser had been on a... had been on a tear collecting all written material as community property lately. All written material. She was sure he couldn't possibly have meant even a personal diary, but... Was she sure? He. She set everything down, closed her eyes, massaged her temples, 
and wondered, not for the first time, how Fraser had consolidated so much invisible power so quickly. Power. How had he done it? Had he in fact done anything at all to claim this incredible lattice of influence? Or had they simply, blindly given it to him? God, I just can't get over how pretty this game is. Even this tarp up here is blowing in the wind. Oh, something's going on over there. I wanted to go back up here. Oh, hey, there's two. There's actually a bunch of cats hanging out here. One in the window, one there, another one there. Two out back. I think there's one on the roof or maybe two. I think that's another one. It's hard to tell, but yeah, this is the cat house. Can we go inside? Hmm, doesn't seem like it. I feel like I missed something over here. Oh! Something in the bushes stirs. No response. Oh, there was something happening up here, but I guess I missed that. There's some people up here, but this is still here. The seer reclined high in a tree, carving fine details into a small wooden pipe. Pipe. She'd done the bulk of the carving over hazy mornings with the stone worker. He smoked constantly. She only smoked when she was happy, or very sad, or bored. Bored. From this height, she could see the earth movers shaping the mounds under the draftsman's supervision. She could see him inspecting his plan, the drawing he'd made from her game, the map. Well, the mailbox says five Dogwood Drive. Oh, that's what this place is? Is there a doormat? Sometimes a key is under a doormat. What am I saying? Strange to say, but I feel like I've been here before. Anyone else? just showed up. The house. When? Sometime last night, I think. I've never noticed it before. Hmm. 
Nobody lives here? Well, somebody ordered some furniture. It feels warmer in here somehow, right? Warmer and brighter. Nice. Real nice. The light in here is pretty great, actually. I could set up a new workshop here. Maybe work on that, uh, that big video synthesizer thing. Fix that up. One could really fit a lot of books in here. There's so much stuff just spread all over the place from the storm. Maybe we could put some of the town's old stuff here, like on display, uh, like a museum or a memorial. Hmm. So whoever lives here next will know who came before. You think more people will come after these people leave? Even if nobody else sets foot in this place, it's already crowded with ghosts. Hey cat, I'll race you. From here to that pile of mail, okay? Throne of Meow. Come stand here. This is the starting line. Ready? Get set. Go! Dang, Ezra. Wait, did they win? We caught up at the end, but I think because they already reached it. I guess just silently happy that they won. What's this? Aw oh man, it's totally broken. Waterlogged tapes. They might still play. Who knows? But all the VCRs are shot. I don't even know where to put all this. I hate to call it trash. I wonder if that garbage truck still works. It ain't like it used to be around here, I'll tell you that. What changed? Cass is gone. That's a big change. Tell me about Cass. She was a smart lady. No, she was a wise lady. Knowing her, I came to see the difference. She had a sense of things to come. I don't know if it was clairvoyance or just good eyes. There was one thing Cass always insisted on about this place. No roads leading in or out. Hell, we can always fly.
Marianne clears her throat. Well, hello. Marianne nudges Wanda gently. <laughs> Softly singing, Wanda, time to wake up. Nope. Dead to the world. Just try again later, I guess. It's really cool. Where did you get it? Oh, it was just in my pocket. Um, my jacket pocket. Is it special? It's exactly the one we need to play this game. 20 sides. You play board games? I'm more into screens, I guess. This was actually someone else's jacket. I'm sure he doesn't need that anymore. Was it Conway's jacket? It's cool that it glows in the dark. And we just need a dark place to play. My friend's uncle said we could use his... basement? Perfect. I'll hold on to this. Don't lose it. I'll guard it with my life. I love how we spin around and time is changing and things are advancing when we're not looking. This was just barely started and now it's like... 60% painted. So how did you all get food out here? Oh, they're talking to Slow Mo Crow. Gentle cooing. How'd they manage that? A few chitters. Why? I guess we could, but it sounds like a lot of work. Okay then, guess we better get started. This headstone has no name on it. Maybe it was his choice. It's good they honored his wishes. And still, a burial is not only for the dead. to blue. You disapprove? I'm being too morbid. You're right, of course. Back to the road, hmm? 